The presidential election and interest rate cuts are still on the calendar for this year. So how exactly will this impact Bitcoin's price and other cryptos? In today's video, we're going to analyze how past presidential elections and economic policies have impacted the crypto markets. Then we're gonna put it all into context by analyzing exactly where we are currently in the Bitcoin halving cycle and where we will be by the end of this year. For those of you who stay to the end, I will have a data backed prediction for not only the end of year price for Bitcoin, but its potential peak during the bull run and exactly when to sell based on historical halving cycle patterns. So one common question is how election years affect the overall markets. So let's look at what the data shows. So historically, the S&P 500 actually sees its best return the year before the election year, averaging a 16.3% return. During the election year itself, the S&P 500 has returned 7% since 1952. However, if you limit that data to just the elections where the incumbent president is running for re-election, that number jumps up to 12.2%. That's because in election years, incumbent presidents often try to stimulate the economy with fiscal measures to boost their chances of re-election. This creates a generally favorable environment for markets. And that market optimism spills right over into crypto. In 2016, in quarter four, which is right before the election and right after the election, Bitcoin went up over 74%. If we look at 2020 during the presidential election, in quarter four, before, during, and after the election, Bitcoin went up over 168%. So will we see something similar to that this year? Most likely, and let me tell you why. Bitcoin's halving always lands on the same year as the presidential election. And by the time the end of the year comes around, that's usually when the supply shock begins from the Bitcoin halving. So it coincides with phase five of the Bitcoin halving cycle, which is the post halving rally, which is exactly when Bitcoin begins its parabolic rise. Now, another thing that we have to consider this year is who gets elected. A report came out the other day by Standard Charter predicting that they expect Bitcoin's price to hit $100,000 as the election approaches and potentially even hit $150,000 if former US President Donald Trump wins. The bank's head of digital asset research cites Trump's perceived crypto-friendly stance as key for this bullish outlook for Bitcoin. Trump's administration is seen as fostering a supportive regulatory environment which could further boost cryptocurrency markets. But elections are just one piece of the puzzle. Another major factor that plays a role into what could possibly move the crypto market is interest rates. Rates have stayed elevated so far through 2024. However, it is still expected that we will get a rate cut later on this year. And when rates fall, equities rise. This suggests future opportunities when the cuts finally happen. When central banks slash rates, it's like hitting the economic gas pedal. Borrowing gets cheaper, spending picks up, and companies could finance growth a lot more easily. All that can send Bitcoin's price to the moon. Low rates also make bonds and other fixed income investments less appealing. So investors often pivot to riskier assets like crypto, hoping for juicier returns. During the 2008 financial crisis, the Fed dropped interest rates nearly to zero and fired up the money printer. The result was a major stock rally over the next few years. Fast forward to March of 2020, when we were hit by the pandemic and a 35% drop in the S&P 500, the Fed once again slashed rates and unleashed a tsunami of stimulus into the markets. What happened after that? After the brief crash, the stock market surged to new highs, returning over 119% over the next two years. So as of this recording, around September is when the market thinks that the earliest rate cut might happen. In November, you can see that now there's only a 34% chance that rates remain the same at this point and only a 12% chance that rates remain paused throughout the rest of this year. Now, this all may change by the time you guys see this video, but as of now, I do still believe that we see at least one rate cut by the end of this year. So what's the bottom line for crypto investors? When rates go down, crypto prices will go up. Now, there's another factor that could be even more powerful this year which is the Bitcoin halving cycle. This four year cycle has historically triggered systemic shifts in the crypto landscape. So let's break down exactly what the halving cycle is, where in the cycle we currently stand and how the next phase could shape the market in the months ahead. So let's dive into the Bitcoin halving cycles and why it's so important for crypto investors. In case you don't know what the Bitcoin halving is, in a nutshell, the halving is when the reward for mining new Bitcoin blocks gets slashed in half. 
This happens roughly every four years and it's baked into Bitcoin's protocol to keep inflation in check. So why does this matter? Well, by cutting the supply of new Bitcoins entering circulation, the halving can create a serious supply crunch if demand stays consistent or rises. Scarcity can drive up prices. We've seen this movie before. After the 2012 halving, Bitcoin skyrocketed from around $12 to over $1,100 within a year. The 2016 halving saw Bitcoin jump from about $650 to nearly $20,000 by December of 2017. But here's where it gets really interesting. The Bitcoin halving cycle tends to play out in five distinct phases, and they're kind of predictable. Phase one is the pre-halving accumulation. This usually occurs a year before the halving event. The pre-halving accumulation phase signals an end of the bear market and survivors begin to once again accumulate Bitcoin during the year. Phase two is known as the pre-halving rally, usually 60 days before the halving event. We begin to see the halving get hyped up and a pre-halving by the news rally occurs during this period of time. Phase three is the pre-halving pullback. A pullback tends to happen once we are a few weeks away from the halving, sort of a sell the news event. In 2016, the pullback was around 38%. In 2020, it was around 20%. And this time around, it ended up being about 23%. Then comes phase four, the post-halving accumulation. Right after the halving event, Bitcoin usually sees a few months of accumulation. In 2016, it lasted about 100 days. And in 2020, it lasted about 70 days. This is the phase that we're currently in right now. This has lasted about three months on average, which would mean that the end of this phase would be sometime in mid-July, which brings us to our fifth and final phase. Phase five, the post-halving rally. This is what Bitcoin is famous for. Just a complete parabolic run for about a year or so of life-changing returns. Last bull run, Bitcoin's price went from around $8,500 to over $69,000 thousand dollars of course past performance doesn't guarantee future results but get this we could potentially be setting up for a perfect storm at quarter four of 2024 not only is it bitcoin's most bullish quarter historically but we also have the potential rate cuts and the presidential election then take into account the transition into phase five of the bitcoin halving cycle and <sighs> this realignment could create that parabolic rise that we're used to seeing from Bitcoin. Now, the truth is nobody has a crystal ball, but the historical data and the confluence of all these events that will be converging and happening at the same time, all point to a major catalyst for Bitcoin and the overall crypto markets. So now that we've gone over all this data, you should definitely understand why this is potentially your last opportunity to get into crypto at these prices. We literally have a perfect storm brewing and all the data and history tells us that it's only a matter of time. So let's take a look at what might be the best way for you to potentially make the most amount of money during this bull run. I'm going to cover a few different portfolio setups depending on your amount of capital and your risk tolerance. These are just templates, of course, that you should customize yourself to fit and align with your goals. So I'm going to talk about how to set up a conservative portfolio, a balanced portfolio, and just a full degen, high risk, high reward portfolio. So let's begin with a conservative portfolio. Conservative portfolios are usually for larger amounts of capital, at least 100K and above, or if you just have very low risk tolerance and you just wanna be conservative with your capital. The reason why I say 100K and above is because once you get to $100,000, that next 100,000 is a lot faster and easier to get, even when you're being conservative. So you have to begin shifting your mindset and strategy from just being all out for profits to protecting the capital that you've already accumulated. So in this type of portfolio, I will usually have about 70% of the capital in the top two dollars, Bitcoin and Ethereum. You can split it up however you like. If you want slightly more upside, then you can lean more towards Ethereum. For a more conservative approach, then you can lean more towards Bitcoin or just have it perfectly balanced at around 35% each. The next 15% of my portfolio, I will be spreading across the other top 10, top 25 projects. These will always be the safest plays and it gives you exposure to pretty much every sector in crypto. Then you wanna have at least a 10 to 15% cash position that you can use when there's major dips in Bitcoin and crypto. So I'm talking about beyond 15 to 20% dips. Then the remainder of that around 5% or even less, 
you can use for riskier bets like meme coins and other things like that. So for a more balanced portfolio, this is for people that still wanna be a little more aggressive with their capital. So this can mean maybe some smaller portfolios, but still above at least $10,000. Here we can lower our Bitcoin and Ethereum holdings to around 50% of our portfolio. Again, you can split this up however you like. Ethereum is gonna have more upside, Bitcoin is gonna be more conservative. The next 25% of your portfolio is gonna be split among the other top 10 cryptos, then 10% in the rest of the 11 through 25 top cryptos, which gives you exposure to the majority of the market and sectors in crypto. A 10% cash position used to buy dips but only major dips of 15 to 20% or more. And 5% of your portfolio is gonna be for higher risk plays, other projects in the top 100, maybe even beyond the top 100, and maybe some meme coin gambling if you want. Now the final one is the high risk and high reward portfolio setup. If I was starting over and had low funds and the only thing I could do was invest, then this is probably how I'd set up my portfolio. First of all, I would not own any Bitcoin because it's not really gonna return much. A 1X, 2X, or even 3X is not really gonna do much for me if I only have a few hundred dollars or even a thousand dollars. So for my main holding, which is gonna be the foundation of my portfolio, is probably gonna be in Ethereum. I think Ethereum could still probably three to five X within the next year. So I'd put around 25% of my portfolio in it. Now the other 25% is probably gonna be spread around the other major caps, Solana, Link, Near, AVAX. These are all top 25 projects that I think have the potential of doing beyond a 5X, so maybe more in the range of that five to 10X. So that's half our portfolio, right? Now we're looking to get a little bit more frisky with the rest of it. I put about another 25 to 30% of my portfolio in high performing sectors and trending narratives. So that will be AI, RWA, and meme coins. Those are the top three performing sectors so far in 2024. And the final 20% of my portfolio is going to be in small caps. So this is projects beyond the top 100. Another thing that you have to be doing if you're at a few thousand dollars or less is you need to set up a monthly budget to dollar cost average. This will immensely help you build up that capital and your portfolio. I also set up a weekly budget to yellow into some potentially new meme coins that fit narratives and fit my meme coin criteria. I broke down exactly how to find meme coins in this video right here. Although you might miss on 90% of meme coins, on those 10% that you do hit could really, really build up that portfolio. I turned $100 into $1,000 doing this recently. So although it's extremely high risk, when starting small with low funds, hitting one of these is the quickest way to build up your bankroll. And the reason that we do this if we have low funds is because even though it might really suck to lose a few hundred dollars, maybe even a thousand dollars, it's not that difficult to build it back up versus if you have, let's say, a hundred thousand dollars and you lost that hundred thousand dollars, that's a lot harder to make back. So now we have an idea on how to set up our portfolios based on our capital and our risk tolerance. Let's go ahead and take a look into the future, into the next six months, where Bitcoin's price could be headed, and even more. Let's look at where the peak of Bitcoin's price during this current bull run in 2025 might actually be. An astrophysicist made a discovery back in 2014, which led him to predict the price of Bitcoin with a 97% accuracy. He made this breakthrough using something called the power law. A simple yet profound math rule that uncovers the patterns in what we thought was random chaos. From the growth of galaxies to the rhythms of financial markets, the power law connects the dots across the universe revealing the hidden structure in everything around us. By plotting the price against time and applying the power law, we get a prediction model that's not just guesswork. It's based on the same principles that govern natural phenomena and societal trends. So let's take a look at the power law charts and try to figure out where Bitcoin's price may be by the end of this year and by the end of the bull run. Looking at this chart, this is where we currently are. It currently suggests that we won't hit 100K until 2025. This is probably one of my favorite charts. It's the Bitcoin power law spiral clock. So this white line is its prediction of where Bitcoin's gonna go based on previous trends. You can cut this in quarters basically. So from here, what would be six o'clock all the way to what would be nine o'clock is this current year, which is 2024. This dotted line right here represents $100,000. You can see that the white line, which is Bitcoin's power law trend, doesn't actually hit the dotted $100,000 line to about here, which is about mid 2025. 
So the power law is basically predicting that Bitcoin's price will hit $100,000 around mid-2025. Now you can see this 12 o'clock area says top of cycle. So this is historically where the top of the Bitcoin cycle has happened. Now it's predicting that the next top of the cycle is going to be somewhere around $210 thousand dollars so based on this the power law is saying that bitcoin is probably going to stay under 100k throughout 2024 now it just gives you an average range so that means it could still go above a hundred thousand dollars now it does show that parabolic growth in 2025 giving us a cycle top of around two hundred and ten thousand dollars so from current prices to two hundred and ten thousand dollars that would be over a three times return. The timing of when this peak would happen will be sometime at the end of 2025. In fact, I researched the Bitcoin halving cycle patterns and the best time to sell is usually 18 months after the halving. Based on this idea, that would mean that the peak of $210,000 that's given by the Bitcoin power law would potentially happen somewhere in October which happens to be one month earlier than its 2021 peak in November. And that happens to be one month earlier than its 2017 peak in December. So it all lines up way too perfectly for this consistent pattern. And just for fun, if you want to know when the Bitcoin power law is predicting for Bitcoin to hit a million dollars, it is in 2033. While the Bitcoin power law provides an exciting glimpse into what could be, we should always approach these predictions with a healthy dose of caution and do our own research before making any investment decisions. Nonetheless, the potential for Bitcoin's price to reach these incredible heights is definitely very exciting. So what's the key takeaway here based on all this data? Knowledge is power and staying informed is the best way to set yourself up for success. Remember that this is a marathon, not a sprint. And now that you know exactly what to expect from the rest of this year and how to set up your portfolio, the next thing is the timing. Timing is everything. None of this information that we've covered in today's video will have any value if your timing is off. But don't worry because as always, I have you covered. I did a deep dive in this video into Bitcoin's historical trends to find not only the best time to sell Bitcoin at the top, but exactly when to buy Bitcoin at the bottom as well. So watch this video on the screen right now if you truly want to master the art of hodling Bitcoin based on his Bitcoin halving cycle patterns.